Have you ever wondered why we divide by n minus 1 when calculating sample variance instead of just n? I mean, we have n data points, so shouldn't we divide by n? This little mystery has confused statistics students for generations, and chances are your teacher glossed over it with some vague explanation about losing a degree of freedom that left you more puzzled than before. Well, today, we're going to see what's really going on here, and it turns out the answer is beautifully geometric. Let's start with something simple. Imagine you collect just two measurements from some experiment, and we'll call them x1 and x2. Now, normally you might plot these as two dots on a number line, but here's where things get cool. We can also think of these two numbers as coordinates of a single point in 2D space where x1 goes on the horizontal axis and x2 on the vertical. Draw an arrow from the origin to this point and boom, we've got our data represented as a vector. Now, here's the thing. Every time you repeat your experiment and collect two new measurements, you get a different vector that could point anywhere in this two-dimensional plane which means this random vector has two degrees of freedom. It's got two numbers that are free to change independently. But watch what happens when we break this vector down. First, let's calculate the mean of our two measurements. We have 2 and 1, so the mean is 2 plus 1 divided by 2, which gives us 1.5. Now, here's the key insight. We can always split our data vector into two parts, a mean vector plus a residual vector. The mean vector is just our mean value, 1.5, times a vector of 1s. So that's the vector 1.5, 1.5. And the residual vector? That contains the differences between each data point and the mean. So x1 minus 1.5 gives us 0.5, and x2 minus 1.5 gives us negative 0.5. Notice how the residual vector starts exactly where the mean vector ends. And when you follow the path from the origin through the mean vector and then through the residual vector, you arrive right back at our original data point. This decomposition always works, no matter what data you have. Now, even though we started with two degrees of freedom, something special happens to these component vectors. The mean vector can only live on a very specific line, the diagonal where both components are equal because it's always a multiple of the vector 1, 1. No matter what data you collect, the mean vector has to land somewhere on this line, which is just one dimensional, so we say the mean vector has only one degree of freedom. The residual vector has its own constraint too. And this is the key insight, residuals always sum to zero. Think about it, if the mean is truly in the middle of your data, then some points are above it with positive residuals and others are below with negative residuals, and they perfectly cancel out. This means the residual vector can only live on the line where the components add to zero, where the second component is the negative of the first. That's another one-dimensional constraint, so the residual vector also has just one degree of freedom. Let's see how this extends to three dimensions. With three data points, we get a vector in 3D space with three degrees of freedom initially. When we decompose it, the mean vector still lives on a one-dimensional line. Now it's the diagonal through 3D space where all three components are equal. But the residual vector, with its constraint that all three residuals sum to zero, is now confined to a two-dimensional plane in three-dimensional space. If you know two of the residuals, the third one is automatically determined because it has to make the sum equal zero. And this pattern continues. With n data points, you start with n degrees of freedom, but when you decompose into mean and residuals, the mean vector always has just one degree of freedom, while the residual vector has n minus one degrees of freedom because of that sum to zero constraint. So why does this matter for variance? Well, when we calculate sample variance, we're using the squared residuals from the sample mean, not the true population mean. These residuals only have n minus 1 degrees of freedom. They're not completely free to vary because they must sum to zero. If we divided by n, we'd be underestimating the true variance because we'd be acting like we have n independent pieces of information when really we only have n minus 1. 
Here's the key moment that brings it all together. Degrees of freedom equals dimensions of movement. It's literally counting how many dimensions our vectors are free to move in. The sum to zero constraint on residuals reduces their dimensionality by one. And that's why we divide by n minus one. We're dividing by the actual number of independent pieces of information we have. And that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.